All right, it's uh, Saturday, March 23rd. Uh, as someone who was born and raised in San Francisco, it just dawned on me recently that I don't think we visited any places in the city yet. So I'm uh, gonna try a new uh, cafe called Byright Cafe that opened in October of 2018. Uh, so just a few months ago, show you a little bit around this particular part of town. So gonna find some food here. Cafe. They opened a few months ago, but they're actually more well known in the city for being a local grocery store. Uh, they've got a couple in the city and they're really well known for their ice cream. So if you're someone who lives in the city and has never been or you're going to be visiting town, I certainly recommend it. They're definitely known for salted caramel ice cream, I think is their most popular. Lavender also seems to be pretty popular, but I'm personally not a fan of eating lotion. So if that's something that you like, feel free to uh, try that out. All right, so the hands that we're gonna recap today are from the tournament that I played a week ago at Bay 101 Casino in San Jose. Uh, it was a $1,100 buy-in tournament. It was part of the World Poker Tour Shooting Star event series. It was just a three event series, and that was event number one. Yeah, and you, if you caught the previous vlog, I alluded to planning to vlog that particular session if there was worthwhile content to be shared. And I'm actually at Bay 101 Casino today in San Jose to put in an $1,100 tournament. Planning to vlog today, but uh, as you know, uh, it really depends on how deep you can run in these types of things to have it uh, be content that is worthwhile. So, keep it so yeah, I was able to get a decent amount of hands in that day. So happy to share that overall experience with you all. Uh, I did start vlogging that day, so I'm gonna turn it over to um, the first bit of that day where I did film a few hands on premise. Currently the second break for the tournament, first break for me. I uh, did a little bit of a late registration. Event started at 10 a.m. I registered at 11 a.m. and I didn't get seated until about 1 p.m. So I was about, I think, the 50th alternate when I had registered for the tournament. Uh, starting stack is 20K. Uh, blinds uh, levels are 30 minutes. And when I sat down, I think I was at level five or level six. And I was, I think, around 40 big blinds or so. All right, first interesting hand of note, I dwindled down to about 14 big blinds. I'm under the gun plus two, and I shove it in with pocket nines, and only the small blind calls, he turns over pocket fives. The board runs out king eight, deuce, queen, queen. So hold here and double up. All right, the only other interesting hand, I've got about 21K at this point. Blinds are 400, 800 with an 800 big blind ante. I'm, on the, I'm in the low jack with ace jack of hearts, and I bump it to 1800, and the big blind defends. We go heads up to a flop of ace of diamonds, jack of diamonds, ten of spades. Checks to me, I bet 2k, and he makes the call. The turn comes to seven of spades, shouldn't change too much unless he has exactly eight, nine. And he checks it, I bet 5k, leaving a little bit over 10k back, and he calls. The river's not a good one, it's a queen of diamonds, uh, brings in the front door flush, as well as 
uh, a one-liner to the straight now. He checks it, which is a good sight. I don't think I can get too much value from weaker here, so I check back. And he turns over a7 for top and bottom pair. So scoop this one. Had the diamond queen not come on the river, I think I probably would have piled on the river and probably got a double up. So a little bit um, unfavorable there, but okay to hold and still come back with some chips to play. So yeah, I'm going to head back in there now to see if we can run it up from our current stack. All right, so after that first break and those few hand breakdowns, I actually didn't film the rest of the tournament simply because I was super focused on playing the hands and it's kind of hard to focus and try to film at the same time. So gonna do the rest of the hand recaps today. All right, so we picked things up at the 500 1K with the 1K big blind anti level. The under the gun plus two raises it to 2K min raise. It folds to me in the big blind and I've got nine three of spades and I decide to defend here. All right, so the flop comes nine, eight, six, two hearts, one spade. I check it over to under the gun two and he puts out a bet of 2.5K, I call. The turn comes a queen of diamonds, it goes check, check, and the river comes a 10 of spades, bringing in one liner straights for a seven and a jack here. And actually goes check, check again. I turn my hand over and it's good. Okay, so one interesting thing to share about this particular hand, it's a pretty small hand. I won't touch too much on the post flop play because I took a really passive line and I think the opponent could have certainly taken the hand away both on turn and river. But I did defend pre-flop with 9-3 of spades. I think that's certainly okay from the big blind uh, given that it was a min raise and there's you know just chips in the middle already being the big blind ante. So I think in tournaments, you're gonna wanna defend a little bit wider uh, in the big blind. Uh, as opposed to cash games and so just kind of keep that in mind when you play tournaments our next hand comes at the same blind levels of 500 1k 1k close to me on the button with king nine offsuit and i bump it up to 2.2k and the big blind defends he's got about i think 13k to start the hand so we go heads up to a flop of ace queen seven two clubs he checks it i decide to check it as well the turn brings a king of spades so i make second pair on this board and it also brings in a backdoor flush draw. Player checks it. I decide to check it as well, taking a conservative line here again. All right, so the river comes a deuce of spades, so it brings in the backdoor flush. And he's got about 10.5K, and he bets out a pretty large size of 4K. All right, so it's a little bit hard to put him on an ace because I feel like I would have heard from him by the turn. And given his bet sizing is a little bit on the larger size, slightly more polarized, so I don't think he'd be betting an ace here. He could theoretically have jack 10 to have turned the straight, but I also feel like I would have heard from him by the turn. And he definitely could have backdoor spades, which makes a lot of sense. But as you guys know, I don't like to fold. Uh, so I ultimately decide to call and he turns over 9-10 off suit. So a blocker to the straight and a blocker to the flush, but uh, our hand wins in the spot. All right, so hands galore here in level nine, uh, 600, 1200, 1200. I'm under the gun plus two with king queen of hearts and I bump into 2.5k. Middle position calls and small blind jams for 10.5k. And it's a little bit close here I think in terms of the math but king queen of hearts is a little bit too pretty for me to fold here so I call. Uh, it's about 25% of my stack and the middle position folds. Player uh, small blind tables ace jack off suit and the board runs out ace eight eight queen four so small blind doubles up here. A few hands later, under the gun plus one raises it to 2.5k. Low jack puts in a three bet to 5.3k. Bows to me in the small blind and I've got pocket kings. A bit of an interesting spot. I've got about 25k in my stack and out of position in this hand. So I think if I put in a regular three bet, it's gonna be about half my stack, leaving my remaining stack to be rather awkward heading into the flop. And so given that consideration, I decided to just jam all in here and it folds back to the three better. He tanks for quite a while, and he ultimately open folds ace queen of clubs. So happy to take this one down. I think obviously we were way ahead here, but uh, I think it's okay to kind of just take the chips down without having to see a board because you just never know. Uh, an ace can definitely come out. So uh, happy to take this one down with uh, pocket kings. For this next hand, under the gun limps, and it folds to me on the button with pocket eights. Uh, definitely think it's a standard play to be putting in a raise here with position, but uh, I decided to just change it up given that under the gun limped, and I'm not sure if he's the type of player that will do the limp re-raise, and so didn't want to get blown off a hand like pocket aids, so I just limp along, and small blind completes, and big blind checks. So we go four ways to a flop of king, queen, eight, two hearts, flop bottom set on this board. 
Checks to me, I put in a bet of 2.5K and only the big blind calls. Turn is an ace of diamonds and the big blind leads this time. He bets 5.5K and I've seen this play employed fairly regularly. I think sometimes uh, when out of position, a player will lead into a pot on the turn to essentially make their own price to see the river. And so uh, that being said, I'm okay with the call here and see what develops on the river. Right, the river is a four of clubs and he checks it this time. So feeling really great about the hand. And I decided to put out a bet of 6K. I can definitely make the argument for going a little bit larger, but definitely want to get value for my hand. I'm not exactly sure what he can be calling with. So uh, bet the 6K, he thinks for a little bit and ultimately decides on a call. Uh, turn my hand over and it's good. Next hand here, I'm under the gun with pocket aces and I bump it up to 2.5K. And it folds over to the big blind. He's got about 25K in his stack. And he tanks for quite a bit and he ultimately decides to jam all in. So make a rather quick call here. He turns over pocket jacks. And so we're in really good shape and the board runs out. Queen, queen, 10, four, queen. So uh, knock this player out. He's a very good player. So happy to have the hand hold up in this particular situation. Our next hand, it folds to me on the button with king 10 offsuit. I bump it up to 2.5K and both of the blinds defend. We go three ways to a flop of king 10 deuce rainbow. So a very good flop, flopping top two pair here. Checks to me, I put out a bet of 3.5K and only the small blind calls. The turn is a three of clubs, so still a rainbow board. Checks to me again and I bet 6K leaving about 55K back. Uh, and this particular player covers me and he calls. River is another great card, it's a three of diamonds and small blind leads this time for 14K and I'm definitely beating all kings here and so I decide to put in a raise to 40k. He tanks for a little while and ultimately decides on a full. Uh, he later on told me that he did have king-queen off suit so uh, would have liked to call there but happy to take it down regardless. Yeah, all right just uh, finished wrapping up lunch still quite a few hands to get through so uh, to break up the monotony of doing all the hands in one location, I'm actually going to shift and head over to another uh, nice place to do some hand recaps. Uh, currently at the Winchester Mystery House. Uh, it's the first time here, gonna do a bit of a tour of this large mansion, check out the cool architecture that's gonna be here. And it's a bit of a historical landmark. It's still a privately owned residence, I believe, but it's open kind of uh, as a public and tourist attraction. So first time here, gonna check it out. Uh, the tour is gonna start in about a half an hour. So perfectly enough time, I think, to get through the rest of the hands from the tournament. Uh, still playing the 600, 1200, 1200 level. I'm under the gun two and I raise it to 2.5K with pocket jacks. Under the gun three decides to put in a three bet to 8K. Folds back to me, I've got about 90K. I've covered this player. He's got about 30K back, 35K I believe. And I decided just flat here. The flop comes eight, four, four, two clubs. I check it over to him and he jams all in for 35K. I make the pretty quick call. And he turns over ace, king off suit. Turns a safe card, it's a queen of hearts. So just need to fade six more outs to scoop this pot. And the river comes a king of spades. So he hits the six outer and I double this player up. So unfortunate, but uh, still okay to have some chips left to play with. 
All right, shortly after this hand, our table breaks and I get moved over to a new table and I get seated to the direct left of Christy Arnett. She's a well-known poker figure. She has her own poker vlog as well, which I think is great. I think the fact that more people are doing vlogs, especially women, uh, I think is awesome for the game. And I'm just a big fan of diversity in general. Her husband is Andrew Moreno, who's also a very well-known poker player, a high stakes uh, player at that. And her brother-in-law is also none other than Johnny Vibes, who has a poker vlog himself, super popular. I actually think he probably has the best poker vlog in terms of overall editing and features in that regard. So kudos to that whole family for uh, doing what they do for poker and uh, just being really talented at that. All right, a couple more hands to get through in this. Uh, Christy's under the gun and she jams all in for about 10 big blinds. I've got around the same stack in under the gun plus one and I've ace king off suit. Decide to jam as well. Uh, all the other players fold. And so we go heads up against uh, Christy's pocket sevens. The flop comes out queen, queen three. Uh, we've got six outs twice. Uh, it does not come on the turn, it's a four. And the river is an ace of diamonds. So get the nice double up here. Uh, unfortunately, knock out a nice person in Christy. Didn't even get a chance to formally introduce myself, which I would have liked to do. Uh, when I sat down at the table, we were both super focused on the poker, so I didn't want to interrupt the flow. And so yeah, hopefully get another opportunity down the road to do a formal introduction, as it would be nice to get an opportunity to do that. I started with about 18 big blinds. I'm under the gun plus one with ace king off suit again, and I bump it to 7k. Under the gun plus two re-raises to 17k. It folds back to me and I just jam it all in and he makes the quick snap call. He turns over pocket king, so we're in rough shape for our tournament life here. The flop comes jack eight for all clubs, and I do have the ace of clubs, so we get a really nice sweat here. The turn is a seven of hearts. And the river is Barry Greenstein's Ace of Spades on the river. So we get a really nice double up at this particular juncture of the tournament. And so, yeah, good to get lucky. Feel good about that. All right, so that concludes the hands for now. My tour is actually starting. So as soon as that gets wrapped up, I will come back and uh, finish out the rest of the hands. Super interesting, very educational. Certainly recommend it if it's something that uh, you're interested in in terms of history, you know, someone's life and architecture. All right, jumping back into the poker hands where we left off. Next hand happens at the level, I think it's 25, five and five. Under the gun plus one makes it 13K to go. Folds to me on the button with pocket fours and I've got 75K, so about 15 big blinds. And I think I might get a little bit of backlash for this particular play. Uh, from tournament players, but I decided just flat on the button. I think a, a more standard player is to jam here, but take the conservative line, I wanna see a flop. So we heads up to a flop of ace, king, eight, two diamonds. Under the gun one checks it. I decide to check it as well. The turn is a pretty nice gin card. It's a four of diamonds. It does bring three to the flush, uh, but feeling pretty good with the set here. And under the gun one just jams all in, uh, pushes me all in, and I make the quick call. He turns over ace of diamonds, five of hearts. So he's got top pair with a nut flush draw and the river comes a king of hearts so we get the nice double up here our next hand comes at four eight and eight i dwindled down a bit to 66k so about eight or nine big blinds here i'm under the gun plus one with ace nine off suit it's almost time for the big blind so i want to try to get a hand in here before that gets to me so i jam all in and it gets to the big blind he tanks for quite a while and he ultimately decides to call with king jack of diamonds the flop comes ace ten four so feeling good, way ahead now. He's uh, drawing to the gut shot here. The turn is an eight and the river is an ace. So we get the nice double up to stay in the tournament. All right, so this next hand is pretty crucial. The tournament started with about 354 players. We're down to three tables now. We're, we've got 21 players left. Uh, blinds are at five, 10, and 10. Under the gun raises to 30K. Small blind calls the 30K. I'm in the big blind with queen 10 of clubs and I decide to call as well. I've got about 180k left and we go three ways to a flop of 985 two clubs. So flop a lot of equity in this hand and it checks over to the initial raiser. He puts out a bet of 60k. 
uh, small blind folds and I decide to jam all in here and he tanks for a while and he ultimately decides to call with pocket sevens. The turn is a four of hearts so we need some help heading into the river and it comes in the form of a deuce of clubs so make the flush on the river get a very nice double up with about 20 players left in the tournament. All right we're down to the last two tables now I think 14 or 15 players left. Uh, we're seven handed here I think and the blinds are 10, 20, 20. It folds to me on the button. I've got ace queen offsuit with 200k, so 10 big blinds. Pretty easy shove here, so I put it in. And small blind tanks for a while and decides to call. And the big blind also tanks, but he decides to fold. He said he'd fold the ace queen, so I would have had the same hand as him. Uh, small blind tables, king jack offsuit. And the board runs out 8, 6, 6, 10, 4. So get the nice double up here. All right, so 13 players left. It's uh, six handed on our table and it folds to the button who raises to 75k. We're still playing 10, 20, 20. And it gets to me in the big blind and I've got pocket queens. So a really premium hand, six handed here especially. And I decide to jam all in for 230 uh, if effective. But the button tanks for a little while and ultimately decides to call with ace five off suit. We fade the flop, it comes jack 10 deuce, so feeling really good here. And unfortunately the turn comes in ace of hearts. Uh, we've still got equity heading into the river, we can hit a queen or a king here. And the river comes out to be an ace of diamonds. So unfortunately get knocked out in this fashion, finish in 13th place. All right, so yeah, that wraps things up for the tournament. Uh, nice deep run overall, 354 players to start, finishing in 13th. I think I cashed for 5,435. Buy-in was 1100 so a little bit over 4k profit over an 11 hour play period. So feeling pretty good overall to make a deep run. Uh, anytime you don't make it all the way, obviously, there's certainly a level of disappointment, but happy to make it deep in a tournament. And I gotta say that there's nothing more gratifying for me personally, I think, in some ways, to make it deep in a tournament. It's really fun when every single hand uh, seems to have more magnitude and more impact. And so definitely gonna to try to play more tournaments. Still so much to be learned in that facet of poker. Um, and I definitely enjoy it quite a bit. So that caps things off for this vlog. And as always, I appreciate the support, uh, the subscribers, the views, the comments. Uh, yeah, just really super humbled by this entire experience so far and hope to share more poker and tournaments with you in the near future.